Alkai, not okay, going Haunter. to be in the game either. Yeah, and Haunter's always been a big tank player. Back in the Challenger season uh, last, well, I guess still technically in 2014, this year, uh, with LOL Pro, he was like a big Mundo player. Almost every single game, if he got Mundo, he would go for it. And oh. occasionally he would carry games in that champion because he'd have good teleports and then be unkillable and walk at your face until you died. And uh, he's been, I think, one of the old, the holdout still of still wanting to play tank top laners uh -huh. in sort of late 2014, whereas people switched a lot to playing the Jaces and the Lulus and the, Nar well, I guess Narza tank, but uh, the Rumbles of the world. Yeah. All right, well, we'll see here because teleport is a really, really big part of that main game. Oh, a lot of bad pitch actually coming out. Two of the main picks here banned away from Curse Academy. They'll have to switch it up. Lee Sin, still available for Saint, uh, could provide him a lot of what he was looking for otherwise. And, you know, as much as people kind of rag on Saint for his mechanics with Lee Sin, he's put so much time in on that champion. Yeah. He's actually a very decent He's actually, Sin, okay? So, yeah, <laughs> uh, actually in, I think it was the playoffs of uh, Challenger Summer Split 2, uh, Zarian and I cast him, and he had this, like, remarkable standout, like, he went, like, 4-0 and 20 on Lee Sin, just, like, out of nowhere, just destroyed everybody, and we're like, well, can't talk smack anymore, yeah. guy brought so, it. Saint has, like, four or five accounts. On three of them, Lee Sin is his most played, so... <laughs> He put a lot of time into learning the champion, even though he yeah. didn't initially like it. But stealing away the Jarvan is really big. Uh, both of these guys really have a high priority on that champion. That just makes me think that Impaler will then take it up. So that means they don't have to pick jungle early now. They can save jungle, uh, and they can grab some higher priority picks, like maybe Lucian, since Corky's banned out. Uh, yeah, I'd be curious to see what happens here. I mean, last time around, right, they went Jarvan, Lissandra as their big two. I, it's actually going to be a complete change of pace Answer here. They Rumble. are going to go for team fight stuff. And yep, Rumble's gonna come out, and they're gonna steal that Thrash away from Buddy Fufu finally. All right, so true to form, as I said, they thought a lot would revolve around those mid-game dragon fights. As such, picking up Rumble can be a really big advantage, especially if they can get him ahead early. A lot of the times when I see Rumble on teams, jungle attention paid top so that they can get him to that level six very easily, and then bring him down for the control for team fights. And I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong in this one, but this is my gut check here. I feel like Rumble is fine in lane swaps because he has such a low item requirement in the first place. Like, his last hitting's not very good in a 2v1, but... That's, yeah, that's just, been a, a lot of people's ideology. As long as he can get his flat magic penetration in time yeah. for the team fight, it's 2,500 gold. Like, it's not hard fine. to get. So, we'll see if that ends up being the case here for Rumble, even without farm. Cast it and hovered, though, which would be a bit surprising to me. Being that it would be a, a blind pick, the Morgana and the Thresh, though, is a, a lane counter pick. And Keaton will go for the blind Cassidy in here. Interesting. We'll see if he gets off to such a good early start this time around, because you do not usually get an 11 minute Rod of Ages for Cassidy. Uh, no. Ooh, jungle control here. Finally, a Nunu pickup. Interesting. And they've got so much pushing power, too. I mean, Nunu, Caitlyn's great overall. They could go for what we've been talking oh, about with the yeah, Azir. Yeah. So, Rumble, Rumble Ultimate, Cassidy. while it's great for team fights, if you lay it down as a wave is coming in, you can basically run a team off of the turret. Yeah. Take the turret in the time that the Rumble Ultimate is still zoning out the team, and then just run away. So you take a turret in the cooldown of a Rumble Ultimate and then run away until it's back up. With Nunu and Thresh, running away is extremely easy. Throw up the box and everybody's uh, sped up. They also have a whole bunch of re-engage. Like, Hanser and uh, Bunny Fufu and everyone can go in, but you've got an absolute zero and an equalizer that can drop down afterwards. And, like, chasing a Caitlyn's not easy in the first place, so I actually do like how well Team Coast's comp is set up here. Uh -huh. And the question is actually, and I should have thought of this, it's probably Hanser top lane Kassadin actually. He's facing that in the 1v1 against Chris, and Keen's gonna go and have to blind pick himself the Zed. Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, the flex pick Kassadin. Yeah. Hanser, I was looking for more of the damage dealing APs. Looks like we will get to see it versus Rumble. It actually has been a popular pick. Yeah, we yeah. definitely should have. But that's a pretty good matchup. We'll have to see because Curse Academy are going with a very similar strategy as last time. Sivir comboed with that Kassadin. And Zed going to do a lot of similar things as well. So they do have a lot of uh, assassination potential. Yeah. Thing is, Coasts are looking like they really want to group up here. Oriana provides a bunch more zone control. There's so much zone control for this Coast team. Yeah. They can basically block off an entire lane with their abilities. And it's going to be crazy to see how these comps interact because Curse Academy, of course, they want to you know rush down into somebody and blow them up. But there's so many good ways of either saving that target or collapsing back on them. Like you lantern them out or you equalize over the top and suddenly your dive from Curse Academy fails. Nunu lives for the counter engage. If you you are a team like this and you jump all in on Thresh Nunu, the box goes up, Nunu ultimate comes out. It's really hard for you to escape any of that. So you're right. 
could be sort of a catch-22 here for Curse Academy. But once again, they'll be looking to make use of that speed, assassinate people uh, yeah. in the map control. Yeah, I think it comes down to outplaying, because yes, you know, Zed and Kassadin can outplay the Rumble and the Nunu and the stuff like that. It just kind of depends what happens there and how consistent, I think, uh, Mash's damage output is here on Caitlyn, because her range is so high, she'll hit you on the way in and the way out. And so suddenly when you're trying to make all these, you know, do all these tricky things with Kassadin and Zed, you're just taking 400 damage per second from Kate, and then your life is painful. So. Got to see how these champions all interact. There is some outplay potential, and I want to see how these very different comps interact. Yeah, it's it's going to be fun for Mash also with Blood Boil the whole time. One of the classic combos, Nunu and Caitlyn. Mm -hmm. I actually really also like Nunu ganking for a Thresh lane, just because running into the lane and Blood Boiling Thresh, Nunu does not himself oh. bring crowd control to a gank, but Thresh already has it. So if you speed him up, then he can just get into position, and Thresh can provide all Man, the, the CC play. that you need. Yeah. All right, well, guys, we're going to get ourselves into game three right here. The score is tied up one to one. The best of five winner plays Fusion for a spot in the North American LCS Spring Split 2015. Curse Academy coast one and one each. Here we go. All right, Defensive Ward is probably going to pop up here. Now, Deep Ward's even more important when you're facing a jungler like Nunu here. I'm very interested to see Impaler's path because Nunu has a lot of options open to him. He can start literally anywhere on the map, his side or enemy's side, and make it work. I mean, how many tricks are we gonna see from Nunu? He's gonna give a, he's gonna give away like double golems level one while taking a buff. I mean, you can, a, a classic one, if your AD and support are down bottom, is that you give away Gromp, like you smite Gromp, but you start on blue anyway. So you give away really, really uh, quick and free experience to your bottom lane, which would help out a Thresh lane, uh, Thresh Caitlyn lane, because they just want to shove anyway and they get a huge minion wave advantage. Um, or it looks like uh, with a lane swap, they're going to do a similar thing here. Everybody's up top. Rumble not even going for a double jungle here. They're just running all into lane. What Minions did he? Has spawned. Interesting setup. Nunu has not picked a spell yet. Uh, I think if they late invade and they fight, he wants to ice blast somebody. That's. It's an option. And, I and feel they like know this tribush steal, ward came though. down. Here's the thing. Chris saw that tribush ward come down. He actually punched it in the face when it came down. They're going for a late invade around the tribrush. I mean, they it's going to be spotted. It's going to be an even uh, yeah. start, though. But I got excited because they played around the wards. <laughs> okay. I didn't care about what was happening on the map. I just wanted to point out that they were smart. It is It is a good move by them. And they did uh, get the information that there was the counter invade from Coast. So uh, technically, they have a little bit of an advantage. They can try and play around this. Once again, you'll see. Both mid laners cheating to opposite sides because they're aware of the threat of those double junglers coming down for ganks. Um, now we really do want to watch the early dragons because it's usually been Team Coast going for the early dragons. Curse Academy have sort of shied away from that, not wanted to invest the time early. And Curse Academy have been going for the earlier levels to try and take advantage. What's interesting is I feel like Coast was trying to find the two on two matchup because I feel like Caitlyn should win this lane so hard. Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, I guess they also dodge the Cast and Rumble matchup, and holding Cast and no items is good. So they're kind of trading one good for one bad. And as you said, you know, Rumble, as long as he gets to his penetration items, it's it's fine for him. Whereas Cast and really wants to get that Rod of Ages stacking up. Yeah. Has a bit steeper of a curve. There's a lot more about levels and a lot more about the items he can buy for himself. So also, we'll see what happens. Double jungling is really strong with Nunu um, because he can blood boil his partner. So. Oh, yeah. It helps out a lot, because usually you're just bloodboying yourself and your continuous roam around the jungle. Nunu already has a really fast clear, one of the fastest of all the junglers in the new jungles. Right. So if you add into the extra advantage of blood boil on another person, your double jungle becomes pretty much the fastest double jungle there is. So they're going to be cruising around really easily here. Uh, clean out both sides. Yeah, so uh, both buffs grabbed and looks like two secondary camps in the way. Do you normally grab Ice Blast or Blood Boil? Uh, when you're solo in the jungle at level two. Uh, so I normally do Ice Blast. I have seen a lot of people do Blood Boil, though. I know Jat okay. also goes Blood Boil second okay. uh, in the games I saw him do. But I'm a pretty big fan of the Ice Blast just because it's a little bit more versatile. Yeah, I kind of figured so as well because I was wondering because he had learned Blood Boil at two because he was dual jungling, I assume. I was like, yeah. hey, what a cool adaptation. But apparently he's a kind of standard anyway. Yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure that's what Jad did. Uh, okay. Teleport in there for top though. Both top laners gonna try and suck up experience. Sheep going to help out Chris here. It is gonna be a bit more difficult for Chris being that melee, but adding in Thresh adds so much danger. As I said, Anunu just lane ganking for a Thresh. 
is scary in itself. This lane, though, Cop and Fufu, as long as they play fairly safe here, they don't really have to worry about much. They've got the Black Shield to rely on, plus Spell Shield. So if anybody actually gets locked up, uh, they really don't have anyone to blame except themselves. Yeah. I would be a little bit concerned about Flame Spitter just because Sivir's auto attack range is so close to Flame Spitter range, which also doesn't pull minion aggro. That cop has to be careful to not take too much free sort of Flame Spitter poke, as weird uh -huh. as that sounds. But so far, so good for him. Uh, also worth pointing out, the mid lane actually was heavily advantaged towards Jess's, but suddenly it got it got answered back. But it was like plus 8 CS a second ago. Yeah, I feel like the big discrepancy in lane should be Caitlyn versus Cassidy. Uh, Mash yeah. should be able to get off a lot of easy auto attacks, and I don't believe Hauntzer, uh would run armor. Oh, he's got 31. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see how junglers actually impact that top lane, because I feel like that's the most vulnerable. If Mash is trying to take advantage of the Cassidy in lane, then he might uh, overextend, and Jarvan is great at the early ganks. Oh, yeah. Well, it looks like we're not seeing any junglers make any hey. successful plays just yet. Yeah, but... he just went up to ward. Well, it's kind of nice, though. It's good teamwork. Got a ward for his teammate. Make sure nothing happened to him. And all is well. Hauntzer also going to put a trinket down. So, very safe up in this top lane. They know how suspect Cassidy is to getting ganked, and they've kind of planned around it pretty well. All right, Impaler just cruising through his jungle. Nunu has so many options. As we said, he has a really fast clear. Uh, he can also go uh, gank early on. They're not as bad as you would think they would be. But here comes the invade couple of early wards. He's got one true three-minute ward that he can drop down. He ends up being on the same side of the jungle as the enemy Jarvan. Also goes in to see if there's a pink ward in that brush. Sees there isn't one. Just pops a ward down to make sure he's safe. Ooh, safe. Taking a lot of damage. That's too low. Yeah. All right, so Jarvan does have a little bit of a harder time. Not able to finish off the Krugs is huge, and the early dragon should be an easy take unless Chris actually draws attention down to there. Well done, yeah, because the dragon just reset right there. You saw it went all the way back. But uh, this is interesting. Even though Coast honestly shouldn't be able to take this one, the fact that there was no vision at all. Impaler had the, um, the, the Razor Beak Smite, so he knew there were no wards this entire path. He, in fact, warded the enemy jungle to make sure. And then here we go, completely safe grab. The other thing that's important about that is he also has the Gromp Smite, which enables him to do a lot of damage to dragon. So, you already saw it reset there once. With Thresh and Nunu without that Gromp, it, uh, Smite, it would have taken... Isn't it only on getting hit? A lot more. Uh, yeah, I think they were letting him get hit a couple times. I saw the poison, go, okay. saw the poison go up. Okay, okay. I don't think it was perfect juggling. Because yeah. with Nunu, you're fine with taking a hit because you're consuming on cooldown anyway. So point. you heal back up. Okay, that's a good point. I'm actually curious to see what he is maxing. I've seen Max consume Nunu's before for the sustain and the counter jungle yeah. power. Uh, I'll be curious to see what he goes for. Standard stuff for Jarvan, of course, maxing his Q. What I like to do is put a, f a quick three points into consume while your your uh, main focus is just getting objective control really early and then switch over to Ice Blast. Like, you don't always have to max out a full skill yeah. before swapping over. A lot of people kind of get locked into that. Yeah, but I think it's Tristana as well. You Ooh. should do three points E. Yeah, that good was job. really close to being stalled. Seriously, that was close at all. Uh, Even though it's new. new. Yeah, but hey, I've seen that happen. Um, I remember casting, it was the odd one. And <laughs> he, he actually timed his Consume Smite nearly perfectly, and there was a random Caitlyn Q that stole anyway. In the beginning of this year, I believe. All right, taking advantage of that, cast it in low, wave clear. He's out of mana, even though he's level, level six, can't do much here. Going to take down these early turrets. Okay, so as we said, this is a team that's great at sieging, grouping up. We're getting towards that period. Uh, where they want to start moving that Kaelin around to start knocking down turrets. Nunu's getting up there. He's got his sight stone, so you just ward up pretty deep in the jungle, so you're able to see all of the enemy movements, and then you start moving around, take the outer turrets, get your glo uh, global gold up for the team, yeah. and try and use that to create pressure. The difficulty, though, is actually Coast are going to be under more pressure than Curse Academy. Cop managed to recall back for his BF sword roughly during the Dragon Timer, so his push is better. He's got AoE, the minion waves oh, die yeah. super fast. Cop's like crushing turrets down, and Mash is like hitting him kinda. He's like getting a blue buff. And Saint is providing support for this whole move. They're staying on the strong side of the map here. I like this move from Chris Academy. He even uses his smite on the wolves, which you rarely do, except when you're trying to provide extra vision for this side of the map because they want Cop to be able to continue to play far up and, mm -hmm. and abuse the extra damage. Even though he has really short range, they want to buy him the security to get in there and go for those risky auto attacks. Yeah, and, and that worked really well. And of course, how nice is it that Curse Academy with this 
basically quasi, like practically all melee comp, uh, managed to get some turret kills anyway. Like, that's actually pretty darn good for them, and so suddenly life is pretty good if you're a Curse Academy member. And we're going to see how they can pan this out. Now, Hanser is actually in a, uh, a wide open lane. That turret's gone. He's trying to leave it as frozen as possible. He's going to get his farm going up. Rod of Age is probably only like four minutes away at this point. Maybe slower than that. Maybe it's still going to be like a 15 minute Roa, but at least he's got Catalyst done. All right, and his lane will slowly be pushing up. So Chris is getting into position uh, to get all of those minions, and he is level six to the level eight Cassidy. So Chris does have to be a little bit careful and maybe not extend too far into the lane. Be in close reach of that turret because Cassidy, even without any ability power, uh, would be able to put out a lot of pressure. Two just, levels up. Just look at this though, like cops like at turrets that people aren't around yet, and with the upgrade of boots as well, he's actually able to rotate so cleanly, so yeah. freely, and get a bunch of damage down. Like these outer turrets are taking meaningful damage. All right, good trade up top. Here comes the four squad. Caitlyn even has blue, so that's yeah, gonna make that, that clear even that much better. And she can also harass you really well under a turret. Let's All see right. if they actually decide to group up. Because Hanser does have a teleport ward on the side bush he could get he could move into. Jungle control it is instead though. Alright, so they can see control the bottom side. Ooh. Good focus here up top. Chris is really low. Let's we'll see if they're gonna find this one there. Chris would definitely be killable. Every summoner available for the uh, diving team. Saint. Making sure it's safe. Yeah, they think there's really good ward coverage to watch for counter ganks. He's got a sight stone already before he finishes his warrior enchantment, so really, really vision focused. And Saint, in fact, only gets the vision control, doesn't go for the dive. Uh, I do like that. Trying to combat that early Nunu vision control. Jarvan, we've, as we've seen, Medios pulled off the full tank build. You can get that early sight stone as well. Extra adaptation. Uh, Saint going to get some deep vision uh, towards Team Coast. What do you oh. think about Warrior Enchant on Jarvan on a team like this? Like, you have damage threats everywhere. Um, I feel like I mean, you're better off with Juggernaut. That's just my read. I mean, it's they don't really have a point man. I guess you're right. Uh, they don't have anyone, so maybe uh, Saint is going to play a little bit more defensive, though. We'll have to see. I'm always a big fan of the Warrior Enchantment early just because it's so efficient and it does give you that ability to burst somebody. Jarvan, okay. Jarvan has such good burst potential yeah, it's early it's in the game. Now. So if you grab an AD carry... Uh, if you have the warrior enchantment, it gives you so much more threat. If you don't have that, then you only, with your burst, you just take her down to about half and you're just sitting there the whole time. Okay, that's fair. I like that. So yeah, Saint Bish is going to be a real threat, someone that MASH has to respect in these team fights. Because if you take out the AD carry in this comp, then it's really huge. Yeah, yeah. There's no physical damage left, and it's just so easy to tank it out with the two locks this team's going to buy. <laughs> Predicting it already, <laughs> eh? I think only one. It's like so awkward for people to buy a locket in this game. Yeah. But he wants his Zonia's. Hauntster's never going to buy that item. But here, Impaler, still trying to keep the ward coverage going. Again, the early trinket swaps. By 12 minutes, everyone's already switched to their roughly end game trinkets, I think. Uh -huh. By the end of 2014, people all kind of got those timings down. They realized that they needed to switch pretty early. All right, here's the dragon for Coast. They have control. Crab control. Nice. Ooh. That was on purpose, I think. Walking to hook range and backing out immediately. Uh, a little bit of a little bit of bush bait there. They do not hesitate to start it out. Hanser's waiting in the or Chris is waiting in that bush up top. He has to be careful. Oh. All right. Mash at half health though. There's the death mark over the wall. Mash is very screwed right now. Exhaust might be enough. Yep, he goes down. First blood to Hanser. Impaler dueling the enemy jungler. He's not going to win that fight either. But he misses the hit. But now she forced to flay Kapoi, who is out of mana. The flash so. in. Oh, he gets hooked though. This is going to be so close. Gets the kill. Ignite is on though. Kop is going to go down. But it's a two for one. Curse Academy win that fight. Uh, Pretty good play there from Curse Academy, but. Really weird choice from Coast. I mean, it was all like that one ward, though, that they didn't sweep. It was a perfect teleport from Hanser. Yeah, I mean, it was all about the teleport. He got there first, and they were both on the AD carry. As he said, jumping in on AD carry is what this team is all about. Yeah. All right, well, here comes a continued dragon fight. Hanser jumps in again. And Paleo's going to be going down for this one. One for zero against St. Vicious, though. Will get traded. A nice shockwave. Can they turn this around, though? A lot of damage comes through. Chris forced to flash. That's a two for one. The battle one here. Oh. And the snipe comes in for a match, making it a two for two. Coast managed to wrest control back. This dragon. 
Everybody's trying to dying around the dragon pit as predicted in the early <laughs> interviews. Now we'll be all about uh, how, how quickly can you shove afterwards. Because that's what this team really wants to do. Start knocking down the outer turrets. Yeah. But the high mobility, though, they, they managed to outplay the very obvious team fight comp of Shockwave Equalizer. Yeah. That's why I was a little bit curious why they didn't have Rumble with them. If you're going to start out the Dragon this squad, you need your team fight abilities with you. Otherwise, you uh, should probably just siege up in a bit safer area where you can actually set up your battle lines. Being spread out like this, having Mash Me Vulnerable with no summoners this time around. See how it works out. Zed coming around down bottom. Oh, the Smite St. Vicious gets revenge from game one. And that's going to be the take. Nicely done. Curse Academy, get the first dragon. So, Nunu had his Smite up. I wanted to see the replay and see if he also had consumed. Nah, he burned it early. Oh, so he had been using it to get the dragon low. Yeah. Uh, so really no advantage there for being Nunu. Everyone always talks about how you're never supposed to lose a Smite fight as Nunu. Right. If you're using your consume to get it low in the first place, then you're not going to have that advantage. But look how much Curse Academy take off of this. They get the kills around dragon, take another turret, and mash me super low. Can't get back in time to defend. So much pressure here early from Curse Academy. And the melee squad has two turret kills already for themselves, and now a 4,000 gold lead. Great play so far. Curse Academy looking very good in game two. Now Jess has got to be a bit careful. They're going in for this dive. Deathmark comes in nearly under the turret, but this should be almost enough damage. Yes, with that Q it is. Nice skill shot moves there. Sheep puts the box down. Can he make this happen? Bunny Fufu in the back lines, though. Going to get a great stun. The uh, damage is not nearly enough. A three for zero. Curse Academy well behind the turrets. Make that four kills. Crap. Crushing this battle. Oh, no reason for Curse Academy to change strategies here. And they are running all over this game. Turrets falling down, one after the other. Already a secondary turret taken for the Sivir team here. Wow. This bodes very, very well for Curse Academy. The Assassin team just does so well in a game full of chaos. And game's full of chaos so far, Kobe. All right, let's take another look at this one here. How did Jez's get? Oh, it was just a good snipe here from Bunny, I guess. Yep. Oh, wow. long range, and as you said, double assassins. They both jump in. Let's take a look at these shadow jukes. Zed actually puts another shadow closer to the inhibitor turret, expecting an escape there from uh, Jezza's, expecting the flash. Uh huh. But it, since he didn't even have time to do it, he still had the R uh, shadow to go back to as well. So Keen covering all bases, not allowing any escape there yeah. for Jezza's. And even at the end of it all, like. He wouldn't have died to death mark until that last Q landed. So really good job yeah. of landing the skill shot at the very end as he's running away. Good stuff by Keen. Good mechanics. 3-0-3 three, three on the Zed. He's gotten it twice, and it's been good both times. I think that that early dragon grouping up and Bash me getting cornered by the double assassins. I mean, you it really good. Oh, yeah. A game can be won on the back of one good teleport. Yeah, I mean, it gave him a whole bunch of control, and now Coast. Can they stay alive for a bit longer and scale back up? They're down items pretty much in every single roll. The power spikes have come in, right? They've gotten the double uh, magic pin here on Chris, but there's so many just base stats now in Chris Academy. Is it going to be enough? Sheep down to half health already. Black Shield comes down, doesn't need it. Out they go. All right. Oh my gosh. People dying everywhere. As you said, uh, in the chaos, the mobile assassins are going to thrive. The, the Coast team is all about setting up their battle lines, and they never got a chance to do it. First fight around Dragon, really put them in a hole. Let's see if they can hold mid, though. Down Chris. He'll be back up for the defense here, so maybe they can still turn around. They do have plenty of AoE abilities. As we said, it's always a possibility. The team with the power can make the mistake here, especially around secondary turrets, going too deep in the mid game. It's you where a lot it. of the turnarounds have come from. Even down yeah. this much right now, 10 to 3, huge gold deficit can still be turned around. We saw a bigger comeback in Final Five versus uh, oh, yeah. Team Fusion we, earlier we've today. We've seen it's, him today already. It's definitely going to happen, so, uh, or definitely could happen, I should say. So, uh, yeah, big options available. You can see it a second ago, though, how good the wave clear is from Team Coast. You saw Chris Academy. They push up to the Tier 2 in mid, and they were like, nope, not even a chance, and they backed off. So there is breathing room for Coast, but the big objectives are coming up. Dragons in 120, sorry, Barons in 120, Dragons in about three minutes, and uh, there's just more that Curse Academy can grab. Yeah. All they want to do is continue playing exact same style. They try and get that division, make use of the Cassidin, Zed, uh, Sivir, move speed, catch people out, continue to capitalize and grow the gold lead without going for tower dives. So for, well, the thing is they found a couple of tower dives as long as I, they're isolated, as long as it's not Lissandra, basically. I know, but they don't have to do that. They don't have Just to. Just because it does work out doesn't mean that it's the best way to go. That's true. That's true. <laughs>
there are other great options in, in League of Legends. And we'll see which options are actually chosen here by Curse Academy. Funny Fufu -fu, stealing a couple minion kills, giving the rest over to Cop. It's easy to wave clear. I mean, this is the cool thing is like when you're really powerful, it takes four seconds to kill a wave, and then you can back off, and you've got about 25 seconds to do whatever you want before you have to get back there in time. Yeah. Mash gets a shield. Mash gets another shield. And he's fine. Yeah. Having a little bit uh, harder of a time before he can, he can get his static shiv, though, to clear out those waves. Yeah, he's behind by quite a bit now. Ori, though, can answer Zed. It'll be very, very difficult for Zed to find solo tower dives. Now, if he does have Kassadin with them, as we've seen, that turns out really well. However, the solo dive is going to be really dangerous on those inhibitor turrets, and Jezza should be fine just trying to hold that and see us at the E turret. Yeah. The awkward thing, though, is that he's rushed the Zonias in order to try to survive these dives, which is going to lower his uh, damage, damage output, output potentially. Yeah, by a pretty significant amount. So the burst, not high by coast. Oh, mashed me really far out. Flash of the way is going to survive the death mark. It's another shield as well. But look, it's an ult for a flash. Not a big problem here. Burns the exhaust from Jess as well. Honestly, great stuff by Curse Academy. Yeah, that's pretty much all that they wanted out of that. That's a really big pickup. Zed ultimate, extremely low cooldown. Exhaust is so important for the team fight here, too. Yeah, three three summoners and an ultimate, actually. So massive stuff there. Mash has none right there. Good poke down into Chris. Wave Clear is taking a lot of effort from Team Coast right here. Man, that's the thing, too. This Curse Academy team, because their two assassins are so fed, it frees up Cop to auto-attack the entire team fight. If your front line is providing that much threat and damage, Sivir really, really thrives in these team fights. Mm -hmm. It's all about Nunu. Can he get a uh, ice blast down onto her to try and slow her down? Now looks like there's going to be no dragon steal attempt right there. Good smite. It's going to be picked up by Saint Vicious pretty cleanly. And Baylor backs that with the command dissonance and Team Coast running out of options. They're down 10,000 gold. Curse Academy not giving them any way in whatsoever. Yeah, they're doing a really good job. As we said, playing it safer, controlling the neutral objectives, not going too deep. That guy haunts her right there, working on that Zonius himself. So once you get to the point where Cassidin can actually initiate on you, it opens yeah. up so many options for this team. Yeah, honestly, Hanser, like, he's, I would say, one of my challenger players of the year. He was great for LoL Pro. He was, like, one of the major reasons why they went as far as they did uh -huh. in the challenger series in summer specifically. And then here on Curse Academy, this is, like, he became one of, like, this became one of the scary teams, one of the favorites to make it into the LCS. This is the team that was always in the conversation when the expansion tournament started. And Hanser has just been consistently great. Gets banned out, loses the Maokai, and goes, like, that's just fine. I'll just counter pick you with something else. I think keyword there is consistency because yeah. that's such a rare thing, especially yeah. uh, in Challenger. Especially all, in top lane. I all, yeah, especially in top lane. All these guys um, on the Curse Academy squad, they just feel extremely relaxed and confident. Yeah. So right, far, like, so good. This is actually something that they would like to pick a fight over. Uh, neutral objectives in the jungle. Uh, the only thing is that this is on red side, and they hadn't quite established their ring of vision, so a little bit dangerous. You know, Keen not being with them, they didn't want to overextend. As you said, playing it a little bit safer. They have this giant lead. They do not want to give it away. So they are sitting on two dragons, which I believe is the same as Coast, but I could be forgetting where one of them came from. I think Coast only has one. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, I'm misremembering. It's, it's only one dragon. It's a good call. So they do have that all-important first dragon here, and that's actually good because it slows down the pace of Curse Academy. But um, minion damage would actually yeah, be would a be really a important dragon deal for, for these guys. guys. Yeah. At least they get some extra attack damage to the Caitlyn. Oh, here we go. Fufu. Aggressive. A lot of CC spent on him. Forced to flash over towards Baron, but no one's able to aggro it, so he takes no bonus damage there. Out he goes. And Zed split pushing the whole time here. But it's a flash for two ults, and they're two very important ultimates here. So Curse Academy now able to do a lot with knowing there's a lot of important combat spells down. Alone time with this turret is very valuable as well. Chipping it down, probably get it to about 50%. And it only regenerates two health per second now. It's a much lower regen than it was back in uh, season four. So uh, that's actually some very meaningful progress. Mid lane tier two goes down as well. Curse Academy heavily out rotating coast. So much Zed split push today. Both uh, series here. All right, Chris is going to have to worry here. Hanser already getting to position to get behind him. 
Defense does come in, though. Extra chip on the turret, and they can disengage. Oh, Chris, oh, though, my. just gets exploded. He's so squishy. There's so much damage in this team. Ulti off onto Impaler. He's forced to get away from this one. Looks like Oopsies. oh misplay there by Keen. Jess takes him down out of the turret. Slowing buff helps quite a bit on that one. All right, so a little bit of shadow play right there. A uh, bit of a misstep, but it doesn't cost them too too much. They can just back off here. Oh, nice black shield, but Sheep goes in anyway. Goes in a little bit hard. Where's the ulti? Where's the flay? Does get some damage down on the cop, but he's still going to stay alive. Mash gets bound, and a double kill comes in for the Sivir. So that is not the fight you want. If the Thresh Hook lands and you, you get that black shield, yes, you don't get stunned. The Thresh can still go in, yep. but a lot of the times you shouldn't still go in. There's usually not much reason to unless you're lanterning someone in with you. Like, if you bring a Jarvan in, all right, fine. Uh, but in this case, there is really, like, all the important things that Team Coast's team does, like, rely on magic damage CC, which gets entirely blocked by uh, the Black Shield. Yeah, we haven't really talked about the Morgana pick uh, in this comp here for Curse Academy, but very, very so strong. Much. Working out really well, especially with, yeah, whenever you have double assassins like that as well. It just makes all of what Coast tries to do unreliable. Like, you can charge an EQ out of almost everything. If Cop's on his game, he can spell shield almost anything. Black Shield can block almost anything. You're going to get the Mikhail's Crucible, I assume, probably after the Zonias from Bunny Fufu. And suddenly, you have no reliability on Coast at all. The only thing actually reliable on this team is the fact that Caitlyn has high auto attack damage. And she's behind yeah, by like really half an behind. item. Sheep going to get blown up here by Keen, but maybe the damage is high enough. He's going to ult in, but I think Chris can make this one live if the No More Spells come down. Nope, he's going to get dropped immediately. Mash doesn't have the damage to knock down Zed, and now Kasten's going to get the slow. Mash is very screwed. All right, he's dead again. More control for Chris. Let's see if they can actually get one of these inhibitor turrets, because that is really the tipping point. Oh, now, game surrender. over. The game times get shorter and shorter. Game 1, 50. Game 2, 40. Game 3, 26. I think the fastest game of the day. Curse Academy now one game away from moving forward. They really look like it hit their stride as well. Maybe Liquid was right with that nerves thing for the first game here. Yeah. Uh, this this Sivir strategy, Sivir plus Cassidy, they've got so much roaming power. Uh, one mistake from the enemy team, and it's a great snowball for Curse Academy. And you're seeing that the target bans and trying to like remove these S tier champions aren't doing very much. Like you remove the Maokai, no one really cares. You remove Porky from Cop, which they've done every single game. And he picks something that's strategically relevant and strategically outplaying the opposition right here. And it's just been rough. Bunny Fufa loses his Thresh, plays Morgana, counterpicks it, does a wonderful job again. Curse Academy seem like they have very deep pools, yeah. and they're playing really smart in champs. I actually don't think jungle is worth a uh, ban. Unless you're going to dump a whole bunch of bans into jungle, it's not yeah. worth dropping any there. Because there's so many options right now in the Thankfully, jungle. Thankfully, Coast aren't. Yeah. Well, yeah. they banned out uh Oh, you're right. Pantheon. They dropped the Pantheon. I forgot about that. You're right there. Um, yeah, so interesting sort of how the game is planning out. But again, I do have to give a lot of props to Chris Academy. They found a comp that works. I like they stuck with it once it worked. <laughs> I've seen so many teams be like, all right, we won. Let's never pick NASA's top again. Whoops. Like, and sometimes that happens. We saw that in the NALCS playoffs. Like, Dignitas found something with Zion on NASA's, and they never went back to it, even though that was the only game they won. Chris Academy, again, just I like that they're sticking to a strat that's working. I want to see now... Does Coast have the adaptation to beat that? And it wasn't the team fight comp. They're getting outplayed by assassins. Well, I think that the idea there from Coast was sound. However, yeah. the execution was uh, lacking. I, that early dragon fight where they had, you know, yeah. match isolated. That team really thrives on having, um, like I said, keep on saying, like the line set up. You've got the Thresh and Nunu that are supposed to be running this interference, making it hard to get to Caitlyn. If the assassins have a free route to Caitlyn and she's, like, there's no way you're going to win the fight right. if she's dead. Yeah, and I mean, just a really good job by Team Curse Academy to have had that one ward, like, above the river by a blue buff that Hans was able to use. Like, I don't know how much foresight that was or how much Hans was, hey, great, there's a really good ward that I can use, and MASH happened to be on top of it. Ended up working out, ended up being a really good choice, and so Curse Academy now making things work. So the thought then is just still, so you said that it was execution-based, though. It wasn't strategically flawed. It could have worked. It maybe should have worked. If you're Coast's coach, do you say, just run that comp again, just don't screw up the first 10 minutes? Mm, I don't really know what else is in their playbook, so I don't That's know fair. if they have other pages. That's true. Well, we're going to see, because <laughs> if Coast wants to stay in the upper bracket here and only win one more series to keep their LCS hopes alive, then Coast need to come back in 2-0 from here. Otherwise, Curse Academy with one more game, move on to that sort of winner bracket finals, as you would call it, and they'd be one series away from an LCS spot. But guys, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to go into the exciting game four, maybe the conclusive game four here in Coast vs. Curse Academy. We'll be right back.